You did say go to the next one, right?
Wow. 
chapter 21. And I'm going to read a few verses because I'm going to tell you about two, a new heaven and a new earth. It takes two to make three. One plus one is two. It takes two to make three. I'm going to bring that out. Now that I got you all figured out what in the world. Here we have a new heaven that is promised and a new earth. So the first heaven and the first earth will be passed away. No more sin, no more sorrow. So that there we're living in the first heaven and the first earth. Now when the time comes, we look for a holy city that's coming down. And this holy city is coming down. The church is to be the bride, according to verse 2. God, this city that John sees, is coming down out of heaven. It's the new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem. We know where the old one is, where it started, right? So this new one that's coming down is coming down out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, I don't want to confuse you, or maybe I get a little excited or off track, but remember, when the Lord comes back, we're going to meet him in the air, right? And we are going to be hidden away in this Isaiah's chamber he spoke of, until the destruction of the old heaven and earth has passed away, then we come down as the bride, 
adorned for the husband, and we live in this city of God, the new Jerusalem, the new heaven and the new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. What do we do to get there? How do we get this? And I'm going to say this. When I go back to Genesis, no, I don't want to go that far yet. I'm going to go to Psalms. Page one. I'm going to go to Psalms 110. I know it's in here. I looked it up. I want you to please listen close. I don't mean to sound like that. It's just a habit I tell the wife. <laughs> I get to look at it all the time. Man. The Lord said unto my Lord. This is verse 1 of 110. The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now, that's two. Is that right? That's two. This is Psalms, what David is saying, that he sees that my Lord. Now, I'm going to tell you, people are preaching that God came down God sent his son. Now I know that there's a great organization of religious people who believe and say that God left his throne and became Jesus. It takes two to make three, right? The father, one. The son, two. The Holy Ghost, three. Right? You can't leave one out. So how do we go back? When God in the beginning created the heaven and the earth, he created all things for us, for people to have things to have, have things to do, to have works. A workman is worthy of his hire. So God created this. Then he created the man. He already made the way for the fruit and all these things. So then, he was first. The Bible says the first man is Adam. Not some thing that crawled out of the water. It's this evolution theory is what it is. And all these unknown gods that people are worshiping. Look, let's go back to the beginning. That in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. God created the man. The first man, Adam. When we get right down to the truth of it, then he took from the rib of Adam and he made the woman. That's what the Bible says. How everybody gets off the track so far and this college things that you're teaching. Look, I'm not against education. Don't get me wrong. Don't misinterpret. But what is left out, just like all these big debates, that they talk about how to fix everything, but they never use this. Always talking about how they're going to save the world. Save the world from uh, green whatever. That's, that's right. You got it this way I did. And the economy and all these things, but... Never do they, even the debaters, ask anything about what do you believe? I believe in this man, Jesus. That's what I believe in God. I believe that God created it and that God is the beginning, God's the end, God's the first, and God's the last. That's, that's the way I believe it because it's worked out really well for me. It's worked out really, really well because now instead of trying to get out of trouble, i found a way to stay out of trouble. Now, in this, there's two. There's the Lord that said to my Lord, right? Now, when I go back to Genesis, God blessed the man and the woman, and he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the face of the earth. That's why we're here. In this process of time, he blessed them. He blessed the man and and the woman to be fruitful and multiply. And along with that blessing, he said to Abraham, I'll bless those that bless you, and 
I'll curse them that curse you. Now, we've got to go back a little bit back here into that history because God had a plan for people to be here. He said, you forsake father and mother and cleave unto your wife. Now, here's where it gets pretty strong. I'll throw it in there anyway. You know why God sent the angels to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? They wasn't in the blessing. They wasn't in the blessing. The men wanted to be with the men. They wasn't in the blessing. Even Lot, if you think about it, he stood at the door and he said, I'll give you my daughters. Think about it. This is, this, is, this is strong. It's strong for the young people and it's strong for the adults. Do I hate anybody? No. I don't hate anybody. And as a matter of fact, he struck them blind, but they was already blind. They couldn't see. That's why we're here. And I'll just add this to you. And God help me. I, don't y'all think I'm out of line? I've got... I'm raising, i got scars and scratches to show it, two German Shepherd pups. They're both girls. And unless they're with a male, they'll always be two girls. This is what God's plan is for us to be fruitful and to multiply and replenish the face of the earth. So the first man, Adam, who was in the flesh, then there is a woman by the name of Mary. God had to use the flesh to bring forth the spiritual part of our life. When we get to Revelation, there's a lamb there. And the lamb is described as the husband. And the church is described as the bride. Not just one bride, but the whole church that believes in Jesus Christ is the bride because they come in unity to believe in the husband. Remember the ten virgins? Five were foolish who had the lamp oil, but they used it up. And the other five were wise, and when the bridegroom came, he didn't come for one. He come for all who had the spirit or the light. I hope you all, including me, have the spirit in our life. Not that I'm better than you or you. Not that I'm the judge of anyone. But there will be a judgment day in which he's going to judge the world in righteousness. Amen. Not sin. Not who's the best. All there is is obedience. That's all he asks, you see. What the fall of Adam was, was he's disobedient to the word of God. But the second man, Jesus Christ, was obedient unto death. Now, you see where I'm getting, where I'm coming from. So John said in St. John, if you're not for me, you're against me. Lord, don't we hear this all over the world? This media and all this everything that's out here, there's very little, if anything, of anybody praising the Lord. The church has got a terrible black eye. Every time you read about another priest or another preacher or another person that claims to be godly, that goes out into the world and defies what God has instructed them to do, and I tell you what, there's going to be a day Everybody can repent. Anybody can be forgiven, but there's power in the blood. And if we forget or acknowledge the power of God and the power of the blood that Jesus died for to save us from our sin, that we could go and sin no more, we'll bless the living God. He had a plan. Because the first man failed. You see, the first man was me in this world. Or you. You're the first one. So there it takes, you were born of the flesh, St. John 3. 
That which is born of the flesh is flesh. But then when you become born of the spirit, you become spiritual. The flesh follows the spirit. And the spirit is the power that leads you on a straight and narrow into eternal life. If you reject him, he'll reject you. How did the spirit come in? God is a spirit. Mary became with child because of the Holy Spirit when she became with child. Now, you, you know, I've looked for this several times. Y'all can follow me up. God was never called Father until the New Testament. Uh, I've tried to find it. You might see it somewhere. I don't know. You know why? It takes two. It takes the Old Testament where, where Adam and Eve and the people replenish, but then it took a new, the second. So we got the first man, Adam, the second man, Christ, and the third, the Holy Spirit. The spirit that comes into your life. The spirit of God that makes you move and have your being. The spirit of God that will have you pick up a microphone and sing glory to God. The spirit of God that acknowledged you enough this morning for whatever reason other than God is in these arrangements that you're here today that you can learn more or do better or find the way into eternal life and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. This Holy Spirit is real. He didn't just send his son Jesus to die on the cross that we can all die now. We all die. It's sad. We all die. There's a day that I'll have to say goodbye or somebody else say goodbye to me. That's just the way death is. But when you love the brother, when you really get involved with people and you care for them more than saying, ah, oh, they're just an old drug addict. Or more than, ah, oh, they, they don't know no better. They ain't gonna do no better. Jesus died for us all. Everybody, whosoever will, come and dine. Don't worry, Don. I know it's getting late. I seen you checking the clock. You can back there. No. <laughs> <laughs> Albert Harker told me he'd come over. I looked at him and said, If he comes now, he's late. <laughs> he's the husband. We're the bride. Remember, the Father, Jesus was born the Son. They shall call his name Jesus, being interpreted God with us. I'm going to tell you, if you listen to much of that television, which I hope you do, but I ain't God, thank God I got a flipper on. I'm telling you, when they bring God out of heaven, I don't know who's going to rule this world. When they bring God out of heaven and place him on this earth, he ain't the father then. And he can't be the son because you can look at everyone that's here today. You had a fleshly father. Yes, and I'll disagree with even some of the advents. I believe you must be born again. Everybody don't believe that. They believe it's when you come into the kingdom and you have your new regenerational life, and that's fine if you believe that. But I just hope we all get there. There may be some misunderstandings. Well, but I ain't wrong. <laughs> you're born of the flesh is why you're here, right? And then you must be born... Of the Spirit. That's the second one. And when you become born of the Spirit, the first man, Don. The second.
second man is done in the spirit. You see, I am. The Bible said the old things pass away. That's first. New things come in. The Old Testament had its reasoning. The New Testament is we live not by the flesh, but by grace. Grace has set me free. This Spirit of God is what draws you closer and closer. Maybe longer for some or short time for others, but there comes the time when you have to confess the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised you from the dead. Lord, I'm getting long-winded. That's all right. Y'all hang right here. Remember Joseph? Born in the flesh, right? You know all his brothers was jealous? Envied him? Said he wasn't real? You know, Jesus was born in the flesh. And all the so-called Pharisees and Sadducees and all these brothers, they rejected him, right? Now see, Joseph was put down in the grave there, <coughs> assumed dead, right? Jesus was placed in the tomb, and he was dead. Yeah. Joseph was sold down into Egypt, 20 pieces of silver. Hope I'm right. Jesus was betrayed by Judas for 30 pieces of silver, right? You see, though, when Jacob, who was changed to Israel, he found out Joseph was still alive. Man. They found out Jesus was still alive too, right? 110 said, My Lord said to my Lord, sitting on the right hand. When Jesus ascended into the heavens, the Bible says he was sitting on the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I. That's me and you, bud. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! Glad I ain't got that Corvette no more. I like it. I like that Corvette. Yeah, I had to sell it though. <laughs> he just throws stuff at me. Better be glad. <laughs> she said she you know, I'm ready to. I told her one. I'll get rid of the other two. But anyway. <laughs> There is a part of the flesh we have to get under control. You just got to do it. But you can't do it alone. I, like the boy said, boy, I got a temper, I got a temper. I'm getting better, I'm getting better, I'm getting better. And the wife says, what do you have? Even hollering about nothing today. <laughs> I mean, I, I told her, I said, that means a lot to me. You might... Know, you don't say that was a good message or hallelujah, but that was the best compliment I think I've ever had. Because I did, I skipped my knuckle and I never said a word. Except ouch. <laughs> There's got to be a change in your life because the old man that would say when he mashed his finger, he don't say that no more. <laughs> Oh, God, it hurts. <laughs> the old man passes away. Ron, I'm glad you're doing better. Praise the Lord. Heal the leukemia right there. Bless your heart. God bless you. And you. Here's a guy here. Had a big tumor in his chest. Had to have a car wreck for him to find him. Well, y'all been getting strong since then, ain't you? Oh, yeah. Huh? How about old Herb breaking down up on the mountainside somewhere, huh? Yeah. yeah. How about your wife right there in the hospital? How many times? Still praising the Lord? I can get in this pouty part and feel sorry for me, you know? Or I can get in this part in my affliction. I can climb the mountain. I mean, it might be tough to climb, but when I get to the top, man, it's a coast down the other side. <laughs> Let everything that hath life and breath praise the Lord. Amen. There's 
a lot of people and things that happen in life that they say, well, it knocked the props out from under me. I, I didn't know this was going to happen. I don't know how to handle it. But I can tell you this, God knows how. Amen. And that's why we call on him. And I relate to this so often. When they knocked on the door and carried my sister to me in their arms, and my mom and dad got killed in a car wreck, I never blamed God. And I get so upset when people blame God for things that happen. I don't blame God for the way the world is today. God has a way out. I don't blame God for people that are lost. I don't blame God because God's word has offered salvation and freedom to all. But when it put me to my knees, I know God brought me up. So I want to tell all of you, things may get bad in your life, but look up. Your Redeemer draw up night. Yes. And if you give up on Him, you've lost your last reward. Yes. I'm looking to get in that kingdom. Yes. The first man ruled in the flesh. The second man is to follow the Spirit. Adam was disobedient. Jesus Christ never seen it. And all this preaching and teaching, I tell you what, they can hang all the flags they want to with different colors. They can have these different things that they agree on in the world. That's religion. You, I, I don't want to get too political, but when an organization organizes itself with a title, it becomes a religion to them. May not have God involved, but I want you to listen. The church will stand when the world's on fire. And the world is going to be on fire because Jesus is coming back the second time. He came the first time born of a woman. He's coming back the second time without sin unto salvation, taking vengeance upon all them that know not God. I'm trying to stay in this pulpit. I'm sorry. I, 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 I'm sorry. If I, <laughs> I, I've told, I, I'm going to stay up here. <laughs> I'm going to stay. <laughs> That's why we have two. We have the old and the new. Ethel, you lived with the old bush. How's the new doing? Right. He's doing great. You've seen a change. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's a fruit that is. It's a blessing. Really, he knows it is. He can see a change. And it's a blessing from God. Both of us were <laughs> Why did I call on you? I don't know why. <laughs> but that was a good testimony. <laughs> you see, the old man passed away. Behold, all things become new. You start reading this a little more. You might have to get there. I have to see what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John see how we live a little better. But remember, the Lamb is the husband, and the church is the bride. God said to Adam and Eve, Adam had a wife. Remember? He called her that. He calls the church the wife. It's not a fleshly part. He's saying, I sent Jesus through the flesh to give you the spirit. He went away so that we could live in this life and enjoy it. I enjoy my life. I enjoy the part of it that I enjoy. <laughs> Is there any disappointments in life? Sure. Why are you still smiling today? He brought you to it. Right there. How old are you, Carl? 
How old are you? Yeah. <laughs> 93, ain't it? <laughs> well, I caught you off guard. <laughs> if you could go back 20 years, though, you'd sail away, wouldn't you? He's 20 93. Years old. He's 20 years old and said he just did his experience. Look at this. Him and his wife load this up in the back. You know, we don't thank people enough. We don't, we don't give them enough credit. In the back of a van. He cried on the back of it. God, I love you. To come to the house of the Lord. Help us all. Finally, Paulette, you come here crying and bawling your eyes out. You ain't quit crying since. <laughs> but we got to keep working on this journey. We got to keep stepping closer and closer. Boy, I'm glad you're here. I hate you at church, whatever happened. I think you said the fire, piano, or uh, air conditioning. Well, they ain't going to need it. That's all. <laughs> Bring them over when they come. And Lynn the house. <laughs> Pull the fire. <laughs> you know, this guy wipes the pews down, takes the trash out, does that thing. And, I, yeah. and I'm going to say this for those of you who don't know it. She might get a little, you shouldn't have said nothing. She's shaking her head no. All right. I wouldn't say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned that. <laughs> this is yes, this is no. <laughs> we say, excuse God, great big. <laughs>